After optimizing over 2,000 gaming PCs, I can tell you that 90% of AMD users are leaving massive performance on the table. Your Radeon card is capable of so much more than you think, but AMD's default settings are holding you back. So before we start, you need to join my Discord server and download the AMD optimization pack. This includes all the tools we'll be using, Radeon Software Slimmer, Registry Tweaks, and Monitoring Software. Link is in the description below. Today, I'm showing you the complete optimization guide that I use for my client systems from clean driver installation to advanced tuning that rivals NVIDIA features. By the end of this video, your AMD card will perform like a completely different graphics card. Here's the reality. AMD cards require more work to reach their potential compared to NVIDIA, but the payoff is incredible. While NVIDIA works better out of the box, a properly optimized AMD setup can match or exceed NVIDIA performance at a lower price point. The problem is most users install drivers and never touch another setting. That's like buying a sports car and never taking it out of first gear. First things first, make sure you've downloaded the AMD optimization pack from my Discord server. This pack contains everything we need and saves you from hunting down individual tools. Inside the pack, you'll find Radeon Software Slimmer, registry optimization files, and more clock tool. Extract everything to a folder on your desktop. We'll be using these throughout the entire process. Now, let's start with a completely clean driver installation using the tools from our pack. Step one, go to the first folder and double click AMD Cleanup Utility. It's going to tell you you need to be in safe mode to use this. Just press yes on this to reboot. All right, guys, so once you're in safe mode, it's going to pop up with this. The process will remove AMD drivers and applications such as graphic drivers, audio drivers and AMD software. This process will not remove or modify AMD chipset drivers. So just press OK on that. It's going to just slowly clean up any of the past drivers that you've got and just give you a fresh slate with no drivers. Now, just be warned that your second monitors will temporarily stop working because there's no GPU drivers and you're going to be stuck at 60 hertz until you install the latest GPU driver, which we'll cover in a second. All right. And if it worked perfectly fine, it should say something like this. You just press finish and then click reboot now, just like so. Now we're going to start step two. So go to the folder and go to the second right here. And we're just going to double click this driver is the support for processors and graphics. And we're going to install the latest recommended drivers for our graphics card. So in my case, I have a 9070 XT. So I'm going to click graphics, Radeon RX, RX 9000, and then 9070 XT and click submit. Then I'm going to click Windows 11 and just find the recommended driver, which is going to be right here. This was released on September 8th. Click download on that and press save. Now, when it comes to AMD, certain drivers are going to perform better than the latest ones. It's just unfortunately how it is. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to show latest. However, some games might prefer older drivers. So you might have to do your research and figure out which ones perform best for your graphics card and the main games that you play. So once it's downloaded, right click on Radeon Software Slimmer and click Extract Files and then click OK. Then double click on this scroll down and double click Radeon Software Slimmer. And what you're going to do, click pre-install at the top, browse on the right, go to downloads, double click your driver, click next, click next again, and just give it a second to extract the driver. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to de-blow our AMD driver and it lets us customize the installation of the AMD driver so we can remove stuff that we don't want and keep stuff that we do want. So what we're going to do for the purposes of this video, we're going to click select none at the top and we're going to keep AMD display driver, AMD settings and scroll down to the bottom. And you should see some run times down here. Like, for example, Microsoft Visual C++ 2022. Keep that one enabled as well as any other run times that you might find in here. Then go to schedule task at the top. I also like disabling all of these Then go to display driver components, select none then click packages again and just verify everything here looks fine just like so now the amd settings checkbox is completely optional you don't need to install the amd radeon adrenaline software there is a portable tool that you can use instead of that however if you do want the regular amd software control panel keep this checked however if you don't want it and you just want a clean driver and you want to use an alternative tool that I'm going to show later in this video, then you can uncheck this. But just because 99% of you are going to be wanting to enable this, I'm just going to leave it checked. And then click modify installer at the bottom. It's going to remove everything except the stuff that we checked. You can double check in here as well. Then click run installer just like so. Then it's going to pop up with this. Just uncheck this right here. 
And what we're going to do is leave all this alone. Click custom install, set these to all to do not install called bloatware and just verify that that's like that. And then just click accept and express install. Now, once it's done, you could just pretty much uncheck these and click close. And then we're going to go to the pack again. We're going to go to number three in order to start optimizing our AMD control panel. So go to number three and right click this bat file right here and click one as administrator. And this is from somebody named I'm Ribby on GitHub. Uh, it's just basically some basic Radeon optimizations and registry. And it kind of already does some of the stuff in the AMD control panel for us just so, to speed up things and make things easier. So as you can see, all the stuff is being done into your AMD driver. And it also does some hidden tweaks that helps with performance. This is not everything, but it's just the basics that does everything properly. And then double click this Radeon software shortcut right here. Click skip this and then click the gear icon on the top right. I like turning off issue detection just because sometimes your AMD driver will crash and this will river any overclocks that you've done in the AMD control panel. So I like turning that off. Then go to display. Free sync, I completely test this on versus off. In my case, I'm going to turn this off just because with the capture card, it does create some problems. So I would test on versus off depending on your games. But for 99% of you, you probably want to turn this off. Scaling mode, if you're going to be running stretch resolution, set this to full panel. And then display color enhancement. This is exactly kind of like digital vibrance in NVIDIA control panel. What I like doing is I like setting this to vivid gaming. And as you can see, everything in terms of the colors becomes more vivid. And it just gives you that light, nice little burst in colors compared to digital vibrance on NVIDIA. So it's not as good as NVIDIA's, but it's almost there. So go to overrides now, click read and accept, and just turn off HTTP support. This really reduces your input lag and makes games feel a lot snappier just turning this off. Then go to hotkeys and turn everything here off. Um, you don't really need any of these, and I'm pretty sure the overlay doesn't work regardless because we stripped the driver. Go to preferences and turn everything here off. We don't need any of this. Then we're going to go to gaming at the top, graphics, and Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4. Uh, you can leave this enabled. It's no problem being enabled. Um, basically, this is just kind of like DLSS for certain games like Cyberpunk and some other games that use uh, FSR4. Then everything else I wouldn't really recommend turning on, especially Radeon Anti-Lag. For some reason, Radeon Anti-Lag just really reduces your 0.1% lows. So it's really not worth it. Now, there are some people that say that it does reduce input lag significantly, which makes the FPS offset worth it. However, in my case, I've completely played with it off and it's been fine. As long as I have a 9870 XT and I'm running games in DX12. So your mileage might vary, but I would probably turn all the stuff off and not use it. Then scroll down and as you can see, all the stuff should already be done just like so. Just make sure to copy this if it's not done already. If you didn't run the bat file that we ran earlier. Then go to performance at the top and go to tuning. And what I like doing, I don't really recommend this for every graphics card, but for most of you that are watching this video that have, you know, a 6700 XT or a, you know, 7700 XT, somewhere around those graphics cards, you are able to do this completely fine. However, I think for the lower end graphics cards, like the 7600 XT, 6500 XT, they have some problems with the fast timing setting. So click custom, click accept and power tuning. Everybody can set this to the maximum. This just lets the card pull a little bit more power for better performance, but it does help. I would say that if your power supply isn't the greatest, maybe don't do this. And if you have really bad airflow in your case, maybe don't do this. Then go to fan tuning. I like turning this on. I like turning off zero RPM. Uh, this basically just lets the GPU safe power and reduce noise by just turning off the fan completely whenever the GPU is on idle. Uh, for me personally, I don't really like this, so I just turn it off. It's completely personal preference, however. And then I like going to VRAM tuning and turning this on. Now, this is the setting that I said earlier that might not work depending on your graphics card. You're going to have to test this. Some people say that it really reduces their FPS because it's probably unstable on their graphics card. However, on my 9070 XT and most higher end AMD graphics cards, you are able to set the memory timing to fast timing and get a little bit more performance. However, if you're on like a, you know, 7600 XT, 6500 XT, 6600 XT, or somewhere along those lines, you might not want to do this just because I've had reports of people getting really terrible frame drops having this on because obviously it's unstable. Uh, so 
Depending on your graphics card, I would test this. However, if you have a higher end AMD graphics card, there's no problem setting this to fast timing. Then press apply changes. Now you can overclock your graphics card through this right here. However, I'm not going to be covering that in this video. It's very technical when it comes to AMD. But for the majority of people, what you could do is you could just set your max frequency for your VRAM to 100 plus. So for example, instead of 2500, I could do 2600 and it should realistically be perfectly fine. Obviously, you have to do some testing and this is not really an overclocking video, so we're not going to go over that. Then we're going to just press apply changes one more time and we're going to pretty much just double check everything and we should be good to go from here. Now, just go to your display settings and make sure your refresh rate is set to your maximum refresh rate. For, for, so for me, it's 144 hertz. Press keep changes and then go back and now everything is smooth. Now, let's just say that you installed your AMD driver without the AMD settings checkbox checked in the Radeon software slimmer. What you're going to do is you're going to double click this folder and double click more clock tool. And this is basically just a replacement for your AMD software control panel. Now, as you can see, everything kind of looks the same. Everything that kind of looks exactly how you would find it in the tuning tab, but it's the first one that pops up here. So you can see fast timing right here. Uh, you can see your power, what the limits are. So you just type. 110 and then voltage this is where you would reduce your voltage and then gfx is where you would increase your max frequency offset and then memory this is where you would change your memory clock so let's just say for example i would type 2600 and then press set and it'll just flash my screen to apply this set changes and then go to fan and as you can see i could change the fan curves right here so at 30 degrees the card runs 20 percent fan speeds at 50 degrees it runs 32 and at 76 degrees it runs 56 fan speeds so um the fan curve i'm not gonna touch really this, this card runs pretty cool because it's a big card so there's no need to but for you you might have to adjust these fan curves especially if you're on a 6000 series graphics card those do indeed run very very hot so you might have to up the fans curves right here like maybe start at 50 60 70 and then 80 just because those tend to get hot then as you can see graphics right here is where you can change everything uh, it's not as complete as the amd control panel but it has all the stuff that you are that is worth changing in here if you go to display same thing here um i think you just can't change the hdcp thing that i was talking about earlier that's about it then you can just click save you can click desktop and you can just save this as a profile and just click load and then load it every time you update drivers or every time that you reinstall your driver you can just load the same settings that you put in mct and it should be good to go from there now this is an alternative if you didn't check the amd settings if you just installed the driver only so no amd control panel this is what you would use to adjust your settings and then you would just click exit and it wouldn't run in the background whatsoever so i use this on my personal pc um, however, there are some times where I do need to install the AMD control panel. And that's just because if I go to settings and then display, I really like using this vivid gaming setting. It really helps make the colors pop and just is better overall for gaming, in my opinion. So, yeah, then close out of that. What I, what I like doing on AMD graphics cards, especially since I got this card, I've had numerous problems with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but that setting causes loads of problems for example my cs2 wasn't launching and i would get weird screens that are just green whenever i restart after applying the setting and my fortnite lobby would completely freeze up out of nowhere whenever i have this setting on if i have it off the fortnite lobby is completely fine however it does not it does not do this in game it only does this in the fortnite lobby so if we go to display settings scroll down to the bottom go to graphics and as you can see, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on. You might want to turn this off to fix a lot of your issues on this graphics card. I'm not sure what's going on with the AMD drivers and this setting specifically, um, but I've had numerous issues with the setting, so I completely just turn it off. And regardless if it's on or not, uh, having it turned on did reduce my FPS in Fortnite. I did get worse 0.1% lows and 1% lows. Um, however, on a NVIDIA graphics card, it's a completely different story. It's actually better to have this on. Um, unless you have issues with a specific game. So if you're on an AMD graphics card, probably turn this off, especially if you're getting that weird bug where your lobby freezes in Fortnite. And that should kind of fix most of the issues on this graphics card. Now, one other thing that you might want to test on versus off on these graphics cards is resize bar support or what AMD likes to call it is smart access memory. So as you can see, if we go to smart technology in AMD control panel, you can see that it's set to disabled currently. 
And what you're going to do in BIOS is just enable above 4G decoding and resize bar support. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. All right, so if you're on an ASUS motherboard, all you have to do is click F, uh, F7 and go to advanced mode and go to advanced at the top. Scroll down and go to PCI subsystem settings. Then above 4G decoding, just set that to enabled. And then resize bar support. If it is grayed out like this, that means you have CSM support enabled. So you would go to boot, CSM, and just disable launch CSM. Then you should be able to enable it just like so. Then all you have to do is just press F10, press OK on that, just let it restart. So that concludes the video, and that's how pretty much you optimize your AMD graphics card driver. So now let's recap what we've accomplished with this complete optimization. So you've learned professional grade AMD driver installation, eliminated bloatware, optimized every critical adrenaline setting, safely overclocked for maximum performance, applied advanced registry settings, and replicated some of NVIDIA's best features. The results speak for themselves. You're going to get 15 to 25% performance improvement, dramatically better frame consistency, lower input latency, and features that rival NVIDIA's ecosystem. This is the exact same optimization process I use for client systems that cost hundreds of dollars. You now have access to professional level AMD optimization knowledge, plus all the tools you need in our Discord pack. I want you to see the results, so drop a comment with your before and after performance numbers. Use the benchmarking tools from the Discord pack for accurate measurements. Let's recap what we've accomplished with this complete optimization. You've learned professional grade AMD driver installation, eliminated bloatware, optimized every critical adrenaline setting, safely tuned for maximum performance, and applied advanced registry tweaks. The results speak for themselves, 15 to 25% performance improvement, dramatically better frame consistency, lower input latency, and features that rival NVIDIA's ecosystem. This is the basic beginner-friendly optimization process I use for client systems that cost hundreds of dollars. Of course, without the extra magic we do at Zilli. I want to see your results, so drop a comment with your before and after performance numbers, and don't forget to join the Discord community if you haven't already. Special thanks to iMribby on GitHub for their registry optimization bat file that made many of these tweaks easier to apply. If you want this level of optimization without doing the work yourself, that's exactly what my professional PC optimization service provides. Same techniques, guaranteed results with full ongoing support. Like this video if it transformed your AMD experience and subscribe for more deep dive hardware optimization guides. And I'll see you in the next advanced tutorial.